Welcome to World Mission Topics Lesson 9. I do not own the rights to this music. The topic is walking by faith. The lesson text is coming out of Hebrews chapter 11. The memory verses are, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. And that's Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 through 2. The key terms for today's lesson are evidence, endure, and impossible. Evidence is a proof that, that by which a thing is proved or tested. Endure, to undergo as a hardship, especially without giving in. Impossible, means without strength, impotent, powerless, weakly, disabled, unable to be done. Our lesson text, Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated, that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with, with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country." And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac in he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, when he was a dying, blessed the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. 
By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians assaying to do were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goats, behind destitute afflicted, being destitute afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Hebrews 11 is a poignant chapter that demonstrates and describes true faith. There has been a great deal taught and said about faith. Hebrews 11 gives us a whole picture and helps the Christian to walk in balance when looking at faith in our lives. For sure, we know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And that's Hebrews 11 verse 6. In fact, our salvation was by grace through faith. Yet how does this manifest in our lives? Let us look at three aspects of faith in order to get a biblical understanding of the God kind of faith. Let us explore 1. Number 1. The definition of faith. Number 2 how faith motivates, and number three, how faith manifests in our lives. After looking at these three aspects of faith, we can apply a biblical perspective to our daily encounters to live an impactful life. Emphasis 1 says, the definition of faith. The American Tract Society Bible Dictionary defines faith as the ascent of the understanding to any truth. Religious faith is assent to the truth of divine revelation and of the events and doctrines contained in it. This may be merely historical without producing any effect on our lives in conversation, and it is then a dead faith, such as even the devils have. But a living or saving faith not only believes the great doctrines of religion as true, but embraces them with the heart and affections, and is thus the source of sincere obedience to the divine will exhibited in the life and conversation. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 gives us a concise definition. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, or the evidence of things not seen. 
Some have mistakenly inserted that the Christian that the Christian's faith in God is blind and thoughtless. But this is a misunderstanding of the scripture. However, our faith is a conviction of certainty based on what we do not see. We cannot physically see God, but he is manifested in general revelation. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. And that's from Romans chapter 1, verses 20 through 21. There is an enormous amount of evidence that God exists, and that the Bible is true. However, we believe his word based on the evidence we possess. Emphasis 2. How faith motivates. Moreover, faith is agreeing with God and his word. The author of Romans is convinced that the God we don't see is faithful to his word. Romans 4 discusses Abraham's faith and gives us a more revealing definition of what faith is. The word proclaims in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope and hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. And that's Romans chapter 4 verses 17 through 18. Abraham had faith because he believed in the life-changing, universe-altering word of God. That is to say, faith for us then is when we simply agree with what God is saying about us, our destiny, our environment, our family, or anything else. After all, he raises the dead and he speaks things into existence. When we have faith, we resign to the fact that since God's word was enough to create the entire known and unknown universe, then his word is powerful enough for what I see. Thus, in a nutshell, faith is to believe in God. Once we are walking by faith, we forget about what we see with our eyes and live according to his perspective. What is impossible to man is possible with God. And that's Matthew 19, verse 26. Therefore, we begin to walk with a sense of confidence that is rooted in the divine, not natural, just as the individuals listed in the Hebrews 11 how Hall of Faith. We too will be motivated to allow God to do the impossible through us. A person of faith is a person of radical action because faith without works is useless. And that's James chapter 2, verse 20. As a result, Hebrews 11 lists the extraordinary feats of very ordinary people of faith. People like Noah, Enoch, Abraham, Isaac, Moses, Rahab, and David were not divine. In fact, these individuals had their flaws and deficiencies, but because they walked by faith, they were divinely motivated to move beyond their limits and touch God's destiny for their lives. Enoch literally walked with God through faith. Moses turned down an opulent life of luxury through faith. Gideon led an army. Jephthah overcame his ugly family history. And the list continues. When we walk by faith, we are taken beyond the realm of excuses, explanations, obstacles, and roadblocks. Instead, we soar to high heights through the power of the Lord in our lives. Faith is personal in the lives of every believer and enables us to move on the path to the distance that God has predestined for us. Emphasis 3. Now, how faith manifests in our lives. Contrary to popular belief, 
Our faith is not measured by the possession of things or the absence of suffering. In fact, some of the most ardent people of faith suffered a great deal. Faith can be manifested in paradoxical ways. In the Hebrews 11 Hall of Faith, there are some nameless heroes. These are people of faith and their lives are described in the following ways. Still others had trial of mocking and scourging, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, and were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth, and all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. He, from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 36 to 40. These individuals suffered greatly, but God says they were so outstanding that the world was not worthy of them. These people were heroes of heroes. This is not to say that God cannot bless us with material gain or divine favor beyond comprehension. However, the false doctrines being taught that faith equals riches or faith equals problem-free living, these heresies are destroying the true faith of many. Since we have explored the fact that faith motivates action, one must deduce from this that actions come despite the circumstance. In fact, I am convinced that a person that is able to endure hardship as a good soldier through faith makes our Lord attractive to a world in search of solutions. They can observe that through Jesus, the problems may never go away, but he will take us through them with clarity and ultimate victory. We overcome the enemy, Satan, by loving not our lives unto death. Therefore, Hebrews 11 gives us clarity in our understanding of faith, shows the motivation of faith in the believer's life, and firstly demonstrates how faith manifests itself. Hebrews 11 puts the teaching of faith from a biblical worldview as something obtainable. This faith chapter further refutes the fairy tale perspective on faith in God. Thereby, as believers, we are equipped to engage and endure the forces of darkness to overcome. Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death and that's revelation chapter 12 verses 10 and 11. let us have the faith to truly overcome the hall of faith list will be great when we get to heaven missions application questions and you can write down the answers. Number one, how has the concept of faith been misunderstood in our times? Question two, Abraham was motivated by faith and walked in agreement with the word of God. How can we also be motivated by faith? Question three, how can our lives reflect that we truly walk by faith? World Missions Prayer Points Let us pray that the saints will walk by faith daily. Let us pray that faith will be restored in the hopeless. And let us pray that people have a real understanding of faith. The End God bless you and thank you for joining me today.